so now that we're in the data editor, you can see we have the users table here. And what we want to do is add 10 more tables. Now, adding a table is very, very simple. All you have to do is click this little plus button on the left hand side here. And we want to select new table. Now you can see that this is a glide table. You can add other sources. So that original decision is also not final. You could also add various different sources coming in. You could have information from Airtable, from Google Sheets, wherever. It's really, really handy. But for now, we want to keep it all glide table, keep it nice and snappy. So we'll add a new table. And the first table we're going to add is the clients table. So the reason I'm separating clients from users is that a client or a business may have many users. So in the future, I want that flexibility where I can sign up a client and they can have two or three people from their team using this application to request designs. Um, the only thing we're going to do to this table right now is add something called a row ID. So what we want to do is head to the very right hand side of the page, click this plus button to add a new column or a field. And what we want to do is select the type as other row ID. Now, this is essential for every table that you're going to create because it allows you to reference other tables and pull in information from other tables. And it's just a safer way of referencing another row. Um, if you were looking up the name instead of the row ID, if you change the name, that connection might be broken. That might not make sense right now, but in the future, you'll see what I mean. So what we want to do now is now that we've created the client table, all we want to do is add the row ID, leave the name, and we're going to do this nine more times for the remaining nine tables, not adding any information yet, just adding all the tables with their row IDs. So let's do that now. All right, so as you can see, we've added the 10 additional tables and we'll just go through them very quickly now. So we've added the client table uh, and everyone just has a row ID and a name. That's all we need for now. We've added a projects table. This is where the projects or requests will be stored. We have the plans. These are the subscription plans that people can sign up to that allow them a certain number of requests per month. We have the stages, so what stage is the project at or the request at and there's going to be five different stages categories what sort of request is it and this design types is is, is like a subcategory within that category what type of design are you after so that could be for example graphic design as the category and the design type is a facebook post then we have dimensions what dimensions do you want that facebook post we have formats Okay, do you want it in a JPEG, a PNG, or a PDF, anything like that? And we have feedback, okay, so we've sent the draft or we've made the draft available to view. What feedback do you have for us? Are you happy with it and there's no feedback? Are you happy but you have a little bit of feedback? Or are you unhappy and you have some feedback? And then the last one are the webhooks. And these are going to be a little bit confusing now, but we're gonna use the webhooks to send notifications to us and the client when we reach certain milestones um, on the project. So for example, when we mark a draft as complete, we want to notify the, uh, the client and we want them to be able to submit some feedback. Once they do submit feedback, we want to know that they've submitted feedback and we're going to use webhooks. Now, what we want to do now is add some additional columns to each of these tables. So you can see now there's only row ID and name. What we want to do, working our way from the bottom up, because they're the least complicated and the least integrated, we want to make our way from the bottom up, adding columns to each of these tables, and then adding some data that we'll be able to reference later on in the app. So let's get to that now. All right, so let's start at the bottom. We'll start with webhooks. And what we're going to do is add two additional columns. Now, these two columns do nothing other than give us a random string. And so what we're going to do here is call this hash. And we want to select the type as other cryptography and then hash. Now, the reason we want to do this is 
this is the easiest way I found of getting a random number. And I'll show you why that random number is important in the future. But for now, let's just select the row ID as the input. So it's going to use that row ID uh, as an input to create this random long string. We don't want it that long. So what we want to do now is actually select another column or create another column. And we head to other, and this is going to be text, truncate text. So truncate basically means to shorten. And we're going to call this the root or the route, however you want to say it. And we're going to use the string is going to be the hash. So we want to shorten. What do you want to shorten is basically what it's asking. So we want to shorten the hash. We want it to be five characters long and we just want it to end in anything. Could be zero, doesn't matter. So you can see that we have now shortened this really long string and we'll use this in the webhooks in the future to tell the webhook where to send the information. Now, I'll just quickly explain the, the reason we're doing this. In Glide, you can only create webhooks. You cannot edit them and you cannot delete them. So what I prefer to do is create one webhook and then route the information based on this route uh, string to, go, to send it where I want to send it. If you end up creating lots and lots of webhooks, it can get confusing, you can't delete them. It, I think it's a bug, Glide's got to work that out. But for now, this is a, a pretty decent solution. So what we want to do is add a little bit more information and we're going to add nine different webhooks. So instead of watching me type it out, I'm just going to magically pop all the information in now. All right, so there you go. There's all the information. We have nine different webhooks that we're going to use. The, they range from uh, when a client submits a new request, what do we want that to do, um, to when we request feedback from the client or when we invite a user to the platform. So for now, we're going to leave this as is. That's good enough. We don't need to change anything. Now we're going to move on to the feedback table. So in the feedback table, we're only going to add one additional column, and that is going to be an icon or an image column. So we head over here, we click this and we select image and we're going to call this, if I can spell or type rather, we're going to call this icon. And just like before, I'm going to magically input the data into this table because it's a little bit slow to upload all the images. So let's magically make the data appear. All right, so as you can see, we've got three different feedback or draft feedback statuses that the client can submit. It's happy with feedback, uh, with no feedback, so we're happy with the draft, just finalize it and send us the final product. Happy with feedback means they're happy with what you've created, but they have a little uh, few comments maybe. And then unhappy with feedback is obviously they don't like what you've done and they have some feedback, they're gonna tell you about it. And then these icons, um, I just created them in Photoshop using, I believe, flat icon or flat icon. I think it's flat icon, surely. Anyway, so that's all we need to do for the feedback table. Let's head on to formats. And again, this is a pretty simple one. Uh, in fact, all we need to do is add some data. We don't need to add any additional columns. So let's do that right now. All right, that was pretty quick. So for simplicity's sake, I've only added three different formats, but obviously you can tweak this however you want. You can add a different range of formats. You can add video, you can do whatever you want. This is just so they can select and give you an idea. Now, an uh, idea of, of what they want as the final product. Now, this is all of these things we're doing now is eliminating unnecessary communication between you and the client. If they know they want a JPEG or a PNG or a TIFF file or AI file, you can give them the option to select that. You don't have to go back and forth. Um, and that's what we want to do. We want to automate as much of your day to day as possible using this app. And you'll start to see how powerful a Glide app can be once you understand how to build apps in it. So with that being said, let's move on to the dimensions. And again, we're going to keep this one pretty simple. There's only four rows of data. There's no additional columns. So let's add those data, that data now. All right, so as you can see, we've added four different dimensions that they can select. They can select a landscape image, a square, a portrait, or a custom dimensions. Now, you can obviously get more specific. You can make this like a 16 by nine 
um, image and you can put here, I don't know, nine by 16. It doesn't really matter. You can do whatever you want. Um, me, I'm just gonna keep it simple for simplicity's sake. And that's all we need for the dimension. So let's move on to the design types. Now with the design types, we're gonna be adding three more columns. We're gonna be adding a category ID column. We're gonna be adding a relation column. And this is the first relation column that you'll see in the app. And then we're gonna be adding another image column or an icon column. So let's do that now. Let's add the category ID. And this is just a text field. Let's add a relation field and we'll call this the category. And we want to relate items where the category ID matches the value in categories row ID. And this is why we added the row ID to all of the tables, because if we were trying to link information using a name, for example, like let's just say it was graphic design, if we then later changed that name, the reference would be broken, the link would be broken. But in this case, we can see that when we put a category ID here, what this is gonna do is look up through, look through all the categories and find the one that matches the row ID, and it's gonna input it here. And once it's here, we'll be able to access all the information from that table. So I'll explain that a little bit later. For now, let's just add the last column, which is the icon uh, column, which is just an image field. And that's all we need to do. I'm going to add a little bit of information now. So let's magically input it. All right, so that's all the information we can add for now, because since we haven't created the categories yet, we don't know what the category IDs are, and we can't um, add the category to these particular design types. So what we wanna do now is head to obviously categories and then we'll come back and fill that information in. So let's head to categories. And on the categories page, we don't really need to add anything other than the data itself. So let's add that now. All right, so that's all done. Took a very long time as you can imagine, but now we have different categories. So we have other design type, which means they will be able to select a custom or input a custom design type. We have graphic design and we have print media. So now that we have these row IDs that are associated with the different categories, we can simply copy this, head back to design types. And for every design type that falls under graphic design, we can put the category ID in this column. So now you can see that the category is um, graphic design. And if there was, if, if, this particular table had a lot more information, we would now be able to uh, reference that information and pull that information into this table. I'll just show you an example. So if now that we have this link to another table, we could make this, uh, for example, the category name, we could create a lookup field and we could look up the name of this particular category. So we don't really want to add that now because we don't need to, but that's just showing you the functionality. So let's head back here and fill in the other category IDs. And that's it. Design types, categories are done. Now let's move on to stages. And stages is essentially just what stage is the project at? Is it queued as in it's not uh, been kind of approved yet or accepted? Is it complete or is it somewhere in between? And what we want to do is just add two more columns. We're going to add again an image column and this is going to be called icon. And we're going to add a number column and this is going to be called the order. And we want this just as an integer, not a decimal. We don't need a group separator and we don't need a unit to be be displayed before or after the number. That's all we need for the stages uh, table. So let's add the data now. All right, so we've added all the information we need to the stages table. 
These are obviously the icons that represent what stage the project is at. So is it queued, in progress, needs feedback, finalizing or complete? And these obviously represent that in visual form. And this is why I was talking a little bit before about color because if you have too much color, nobody notices anything. So what you wanna do is have color in strategic places. And in this case, it's the status icons or stages icon rather. This column here, the order column, we don't need to talk about it now, but I'll just give you a brief explanation. It's essentially going to be used to sort the projects in a descending order from the highest to the lowest, just so you have a cleaner um, feed, basically, uh, for the user. So it's not going to have everything all over the place. It'll be nice and organized. So let's get on to the last one we're going to do that is the simple ones of um, the simple tables that we're going to set up. And that's the plans table. So this is essentially what subscription plan are they on? How much does it cost? And how many requests do that give them every month? So we're going to add, I believe, two, three more uh, columns. So let's add the first one, which is the number of requests. So we want this as an integer and that's all we need to do there. We don't want a group separator. Then we want to add the monthly fee, which is also going to be a number. Um, I like it clean. We don't really need decimals here. Uh, we will use a group separator. So if it's a thousand, there'll be a comma. And we can put a dollar sign, not after the number, but before the number. And that's all we need to do for that one. And the last one, is the client's uh, relation. Now, this is, with this one, we actually can't add yet because we haven't added the needed column into the client's table. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna come back in the future and add a relation table where this row ID matches a column in here called plan ID. So at the moment, I'm just going to select row ID to be edited. Hopefully we remember to edit that, <laughs> but I just wanted to add it in now. So it's there and it's good to go. So that's it for the simple tables. The next tables are a little bit more complicated because they're pulling in all of this information that we've just created and they're kind of intertwined with each other. So the next little section of this video is going to be a little bit more back and forth, creating a column here, then going to another table to create a column there. Um, so for now, that's it for the simple tables. Let's get on to the next bit. Just kidding, I forgot to add the data. <laughs> so we're gonna magically input the data for the plans and it's gonna appear right now. Beautiful, isn't that easy? All right, now we're gonna get onto the more complex tables. If you enjoyed that video or you found it useful, then I highly suggest you subscribe and hit the bell icon because I have a ton of low-code videos and tutorials in the pipeline for you. And if you like the idea of becoming a low-code developer who can create anything their mind can imagine without code, head to lowcode.com and sign up for one of our online boot camps. See you next time.